Well, we're actually uh, a little after time, so I'll probably go ahead and get started. People can wander in. It's too bad. I actually brought gifts. So I'm going to do something a little bit unique today. Um, uh, I guess just uh, very quickly, I want to thank Lloyd. I don't know where Lloyd is, uh, but Lloyd sort of runs the open source track here at uh, uh, the OpenStack Summit. And I, I did this talk uh, in San Diego. And when I asked the question I'm about to ask, there was about three people, maybe four people that raised their hands. So um, first, I'll start off by saying, uh, introduce myself. My name is Cole Crawford. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Open Compute Foundation. Uh, similar to the OpenStack Foundation, we're a nonprofit, 501c6, um, and uh, you know we're here to serve a, a function just like the OpenStack Foundation does. So that being said, uh, thank you all for coming. Who here has heard of Open Compute? <laughs> that is awesome. That's uh, that's good news. Like I said, there was about three people last time, uh, six months ago, that that raised their hands. So thank you guys for coming. Um, I know it's uh, some people's last, some people's last session. I know we're near the end, and I know you guys have all been sitting through a bunch of uh, very, very technical talks um, regarding lots of wonderful software. Uh, considering you like Python, um, so I wanted to uh, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Last time in San Diego, I did a talk. Uh, it was fairly technical, kind of the history of of how Open uh, Open Compute got started. Um, and we'll touch a little bit on that this time around as well. But uh, you know, I kind of thought to myself, all right, these guys, this is the last day. These guys have sat through a bunch of technical talks. Um, if I was giving a TED talk, what would I talk about? Um, and so we'll, we'll sort of uh, broad sweeping, you know, hopefully uh, um, you guys will you'll, you'll appreciate uh, sort of the message around this. And then we'll go into sort of the depths of open compute and how that's related to OpenStack. Uh, so, uh, also very interactively, um, I want you guys to ask questions. I, I don't, I don't enjoy just speaking at you guys for uh, for 40 minutes or however long we're going. Um, so, if you have questions on anything, um, probably later in the in the uh, presentation, uh, please speak up, raise your hand. Let's make this a conversation. Um, and I'm going to stop uh, occasionally on a slide. We're going to do some trivia. I've got some pretty cool open compute micro buffs. Have you guys seen these things yet? It's pretty cool. Uh, I've got a few. Just put them on your phone, and they'll clean your screen or your tablet or your, your laptop screen. They're kind of neat. And then I've got two beagle boards to give away. So we'll do some trivia interactively, and we'll go from there. So humans are made for collaboration. Right. Uh, if you think about the caveman times, the the lonely caveman trying to start the fire is nowhere as efficient as you know the the the, the cavemen that that hunt and, and gather and bring back. And you know this is sort of the way that um, as we've progressed as a species, we kind of start off with saying, "Hey, that's mine." Right. So uh, Freud uh, had the concept of the 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 id, the ego, and the superego. And as you start thinking that you know. Uh, you can let something go and start sharing it and not lose out, that's when innovation and collaboration can occur. Great example of that is this. And this is our first trivia question. Who can name the craft on the left? Not Sputnik. We're close. This was the first spacecraft to take the first human into space. That is worth this. That that is. No, that is the guy. That is that is the person it took. Um, anybody with the spacecraft? All right, we'll save it. There's lots of trivia in here, so uh, it's called the Vostok One. But the message is, you know, the the in the in the space race, you know, you had obviously the 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 Soviet Union and uh, and. Uh, uh, the, the Americans um, racing for you know dominance and uh, differentiation. They were ob obviously doing it very differently, uh, and they both thought it was uh, it was going to be a huge accomplishment for their nation. And uh, you know, in the end, it didn't really serve uh, to to do much but uh, uh, you know continue the Cold War, et cetera, et cetera. But now, uh, although the 
the um, Soviet Union still runs independently. They are obviously the, the way we get to the International Space Station today. So something very closed, ultimately ending up very open. So the universal constant is, anybody? Change. The only thing that doesn't change is that everything changes. And this is sort of uh, something I like to, to talk about. If you look at this, it's actually, uh, it, it, it follows fairly closely the process of grieving, which, which I love in context of open compute, right? Um, there's a lot of incumbents that were here to sort of, you know, stand up and say, uh, you know, it's not, it's not dominated anymore. This is going to be a community effort. So, uh, you know, you typically, it's, it's very small for me here. So, obviously, starting, you know, with uh, uh, denial and, you know, slowly over time uh, accepting. And I'd like to think that open compute could be a path to enlightenment. It's certainly a path to uh, efficiency. And we'll see how the community grows and how uh, enlightening the project is for everybody. So this is a, another, another uh, great movie. Um, one of the trivia questions here uh, would be, who was, oh, we'll, we'll sort of talk about um, the, the, the bitter truth being more powerful than blissful ignorance, right? And this is sort of the red pill, blue pill dilemma inside the matrix. Um, anybody know the original character that wanted to take the blue pill? We're all geeks, come on. Somebody should know this. Rick, who is the Matrix character who wanted to take the blue pill? Cypher. You already have one though, right? <laughs> Gosh. Okay. Uh, another trivia question for one of these. Um, you've all obviously heard of Open Compute. Who, who knows the original three founding Open Compute members? There's one. That's, that's one. one, one. The, the original founding members of the Open Compute project were three companies. I'll give you a hint. They're, 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 they're on this slide. <laughs> Intel, Facebook, Rackspace. It goes to the person with the last answer. Good job. Community effort, right? This is awesome. Um, so you look at, you know, you look at sort of the other guys, and, and by other guys, you know, I want to I wanna just clarify, I don't mean like Dell and HP and IBM and these guys, right? You have, you have much more proprietary companies out there differentiating in, in, in much, um, in, in, in ways that uh, don't even line up with the vision of things like OpenStack and Open Compute. Not gonna name names, but um, I don't, what does that say? No, you guys are good. You guys are members. HGST is a member, so no, you guys are, you guys are excellent. Um, but there are, there are you know, companies out there that make lots and lots of money by building um, things that start with EXA. Um, and could be substituted with dollar. Uh, so uh, not Dell, not HP, not IBM. Those, we love those guys. They're obviously supporting OpenStack. Um, actually, we've got representatives from both HP uh, and Dell on the incubation committee for the Open Compute Project. So, um, but there are people that are completely lost, right, and are completely ignorant to, to the process of change and to the fact that uh, the world around us is getting faster, innovation is happening quicker and quicker, and people are doing things out in the open, which presented me with some really great slide opportunity, which I didn't capitalize on. So curiosity killed the lion, right? There's when I, it was kind of, a, a, kind of an interesting um, duality there in the, in the slide. Um, you know, Every great innovation could be framed with what if, right? When you start asking questions about the world you're in now and the world that you could create, that's when powerful ideas happen. Um, and that being said, this is one of my favorite trivia questions. I've actually got two uh, coming up for you. 
Who can name the cat? Who can name Alice's cat for a beagle board? Yes. Yes, who is it? Oh. I'm the only one in this room. You can just um you can just come up here and I'll just keep handing you things. Uh, so please. And guys, if you don't know what the Beagle Board is, this is also a, a this is an open source project uh, originally um, initiated by Texas Instruments. We like this. You can hack on these things. You can uh, do a lot of cool sort of hacky things with these boards. So congratulations for that. Um, when Alice started, uh, you know, looking down the rabbit hole, you know, obviously it was it was curiosity that led her down there, and ultimately it ended up in a very good thing. And and in this community. You know, we see, um, if you look at OpenStack as an example, right, uh, this started with a what-if question. I mean, I think Rick Clark was kind of the guy that asked that question, right? Um, and for those that don't know, Rick is uh, now with Cisco and uh, great sponsors of the, the OpenStack project. Um, and I was on the other side of this. I was on the government side uh, working with NASA uh, and the Ansel Labs team with, with Nova. Um, Rick was uh, at Rackspace, and they had the whole... The, the whole Swift contribution, and um, you know, it was it was a combination of Rackspace and NASA saying, "Hey, we've got this coming out here. It's obviously uh, they don't do anything in the private space. We obviously, for uh, you know, national security reasons or whatever, um, need that sort of privacy." Uh, Rackspace was growing very quickly, and they needed uh, something that was going to go beyond slice host, beyond that VPS, and they started asking the questions of what if, and you know, I'm if I've got my story correctly. Uh, Rick basically said, what if we called NASA and started working together with those guys to create an alternative? And from there on, it's been what if over and over and over again in terms of OpenStack progression and innovation. You know, what if we had a, a, a block storage capability? What if we had an imaging store? What if we had a way to, to, to view this stuff uh, with a self-service provisioning portal? You know, what if we had networking as a service. I mean, it's always that what if question. And when you do that, you end up going far beyond what you thought possible, right? When you start pushing those types of boundaries and those types of limits, you end up achieving heights that you otherwise would not even expect. You know, and I did not think that I would see in my lifetime somebody jump out of a space portal with a suit on. So uh, that being said, for one of, one of the micro buffs, who can name either the project or the diver? Felix, boom. And the project? Anybody? Perfect. Great. So, so by working together, uh, you know, and just asking questions. Um, you can achieve really, really powerful things. And I want to reclaim a little bit of your time today. I'm going a little bit uh, quicker than I would. We're about on time, but uh, um, you know, the, just the, the whole message of, of working together and what you can achieve when you do that is just fantastic. So you know, what if we made a tool of storage array? Right? What if, uh, what if instead of the incumbent 19-inch rack standard, which actually came out of the railroad switching days, uh, in the early 1900s and was then adopted by the music industry and the film industry as the way that they would rack their gear. Why is that efficient for data center computing, right? When you start asking those questions, right, the combination of why and what if uh, leads you to very powerful things. Um, so Facebook started asking these questions. You know, what if, what if we made it 21 inches and what if originally made it 1.5U instead of 1? where one, you know, one, uh, one U fans are not very efficient, and two U fans are only marginally more efficient than um, one and a half U. And being mechanical, right, fans take a lot of draw in the data center. Um, so they landed originally on a one and a half U chassis that was 21 inches wide. And they had the foresight to think, okay, well, maybe for compute, 21 inches isn't all that necessary, but but for storage, and um, how many of these do we have? Who here, yeah, this is a good question. Who here knows what Facebook's biggest challenge was in terms of their data center? And, and just operationally, what's, what's their biggest challenge? 
those are those are big problems, but storage, right? Um, Facebook was growing exponentially, right? Exponentially, order of magnitude growth in terms of how much storage they were having to, um, you know, um, archive, you know, from from production quality storage all the way down to to very cold storage. Uh, so they said, you know, what if we did 21 inches? And what if we could get an extra three and a half inch drive horizontally in every two U, right? As drive density gets better, our storage gets, you know, our storage story becomes much, much better. Um, you know, what if we stopped using the, um, the 240 power spec? When you step down from 480, right, you're actually just wasting energy. All you're doing is wasting energy in your data center when you step down from 480 to 240. Not only is it more equipment that you have to buy, but you have you know, electrical engineering that happens, and then you've got power supplies that are not as efficient because they're having to talk something different. Um, you've got you know, uh, voltage spikes that can happen. You actually have a much less efficient and much more expensive solution to the problem you're trying to solve, right? which is efficient at scale computing. And the, yeah, good question for one of these. What's sort of the magic number as you measure data center efficiency, first, who knows what it's called? Who knows what, what, what you measure data center efficiency in? PUE, you've already got one. Who else, you said it though, I heard it. And what's the magic number? 1.0, exactly. And why is that, why is, why is it 1.0? Anybody? Exactly. For every one watt you're consuming, you have that capability that you're processing, which is it's a, it's a, it's a good way to measure. Um, so Facebook started asking those questions, you know, what if we did this? What if we actually took out all of the power supplies, right? What if we, uh, what if we used lead batteries as a backup solution? It's, uh, these are, you know, these are amazing questions. You talk about a, you know, a, a generator and a backup uh, program that, you know, doesn't rely on this. And you've got a very, very, very expensive uh, build out on your hands in terms of uh, what you need to do in case of uh, power failure. And so what if we, uh, what if we incorporated blade infrastructure into an, a community driven open standard, right? Where you now have, uh, so the latest 3.0 spec over here, they gave me a laser, is it dangerous? So um, over here you've got the latest 3.0 version of Open Compute, which is called Winterfell, which has been a darn good question to give one of these away. Um, and inside of Winterfell, you've got three, which is uh, one third of those takes up exactly one third of the 21 inches. So you can fit three side by side. You get a very dense, uh, very um, uh, power efficient, uh, and very performant solution. And because of the way that we've architected, and I say we, I should say Facebook, I, you know, uh, disclosure, I'm not a Facebook employee, um, but because of the way that Facebook architected this stuff, they were able to actually start thinking about bigger things like data centers. What if we designed a data center that was purpose built for the hardware we're designing? And what if we made that data center geographically aware in context of you know, how it gets cooled. So, so Facebook, again, went, went back to their Palo Alto basement and started uh, designing a data center that would ultimately achieve that, that 1.0 PUE, that magic number. And by the way, the standard data center operates at, uh, anybody know standard data center? 1.5, roughly. Um, there are companies like Google whose best published PUE is about 1.3. Facebook's Prineville Data Center, I think just hit 1.03. So we're getting very, 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 very close to that 1.0 number. Um, but Facebook didn't want to do this alone. They came up with this uh, great project called Project Freedom, uh, which I'm not ashamed to say it was freedom from Dell and HP. Um, but they turned that into open compute. And it wasn't necessarily that they wanted out of, of buying from Dell or HP. That was never the case. Um, if, if, if anybody here operate a, a heterogeneous data center? 
you know, deal with IPMI problems maybe between the two, right? Um, it's hard to operate a heterogeneous data center, <coughs> excuse me, when you have, um, when you have different IPMI specifications, when you have different out-of-band management capabilities. And these companies obviously are, are differentiating on things that, you know, uh, uh, going back to that, that second slide, differentiating on things that aren't important to the end user, right? And this was very much a, a sort of a, a push process um, where Facebook said, you know, this is what we want. We want to pull from the ODMs, right? We want to pull from the other people that can manufacture these things um, and listen to us and ultimately build these things. And they ended up instantly with a community that said, you know what, we want this stuff as well, right? We want to, we want to be able to design purpose-built hardware for purpose-built data centers to achieve that magic PUE uh, you know, number that everybody's hoping that we can achieve. And this speaks to not only you know, the C-level executives that are cutting the check for the power and cooling, but also you know, all, of the, all of the executives that are focused on you know, carbon neutral uh, data centers and, and green computing. So Facebook wasn't alone, right? Uh, Intel very quickly, um, I should have put Intel slide up in, or logo on this slide, but Intel very quickly realized this. And this was profound uh, for no other reason or for, you know, least of which um, Intel was a founding member of the ODCA. So the fact that Intel was look at, you know, look at things that could be filtered through the ODCA, which is very much a vendor driven uh, 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 consortium to something like Open Compute, which is a very community-driven consortium. Uh, and by the way, we didn't start as a standard, right? Open Compute started as just a sort of a, a spec-level reference architecture. Uh, the community is what really determined that it was, you know, sort of standards-based. Um, and since then, you know, they've they've attracted, uh, well, companies like Rackspace. So. Inside of the Open Compute Foundation, we run multiple projects, just like OpenStack runs multiple projects. We have our variations of Nova and Glance and Swift and all that great stuff. Uh, we manage uh, motherboard, hardware management, certification, disaggregated I.O., which we'll talk uh, about in a second, um, open rack, uh, storage, and data center design. And those are sort of the, 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 the variations or the related technologies that we have uh, to OpenStack. Um, so giving this stuff away, Rackspace said, you know, we're growing really fast. We've got, we certainly operate at scale. We're getting closer and closer and closer to, to sort of hyperscale. What if we took the open rack and purpose built it for our needs? And you end up with a, a Rackspace uh, open rack. And the open rack is the, the 21 inch enclosure, bus bars, and et cetera, et cetera. So any questions so far? You guys are all with me? Or are you just tired? So open is better. At scale, open source infrastructure, uh, the ability, uh, somebody in the room and, uh, and I were talking yesterday, I don't, I, I don't see him, but we were talking about things um, things in open source, well, just the things in general, um, to make them less painful, you do them more often, right? And that at least gets you comfortably numb to the situation that you're in, right? So in, in OpenStack land, deploy you know, 75 times a day because deploying code is hard, right? Iterate on that code a lot. Um, and this is sort of the same process we fall in the open compute uh, world. Um, where you know, it usually takes from, from design to manufacturing upwards of you know, 14 months inside of a traditional uh, you know, sort of push-based process. Um, we have gone from complete design to complete fabrication in less than six months. It's taken one of our, one of our contributors, it took them six months to put something down on a napkin and end up with an actual board that we showed off at the Open Compute Sum Summit in, in January. So, we are a platform for rapid uh, innovation. Um, you know, and we believe that differentiation can matter, right? We, uh, we work with a, 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 a sp it's not a spin-off, right? But it's a, they've branched uh, out uh, the open rack uh, in China and they've called it Scorpio. Now it's still uh, largely based on open rack. Um, you have some of the tier one vendors that have uh, 
uh, submitted some of their people and, and time into making that better. And as of uh, 2.0, it sounds like um, you know, they're on track to, to help uh, bring that back into the latest um, spec we have for OpenRack. And so now we've got you know, sort of international uh, collaboration on purpose-built um, OpenRack that, again, is sort of geographically aware of, of um, where it's actually being built and used for. Uh, which is which is cool, right? Because um, the difference between you know the needs here or or in the data center here, which by the way, for one of these, who knows where it is? Who knows where this data center is on the left? Prineville. Who said it? Awesome. That's right. It's Prineville, Oregon was the first uh, data center that that Rackspace built to be open compute. Um, so in China. They, uh, the Tencent, Baidu, and Alibaba work together on, uh, on Scorpio, and they're doing things that are relevant to their geographic location. We'll be over in Tokyo next month working on uh, uh, an OCP engineering summit where, I kid you not, there's a proposal inside of Open Compute to hang racks from the ceiling because when, when the, you know, the, the, um, the earthquakes in Tokyo or in Japan happen, Having these things just be able to swing from the ceiling would be, it, this is a real submission. I mean, this is a real, we were gonna go through the pro thought process of what that would look like. So there's just, you know, and again, it's a what if question, right? What if you put racks and attach them to the ceiling instead of the floor? It's, um, it's absolutely amazing. And I guess the third thing is, um, one of the ways that we're really trying to help the OpenStack community is with uh, certification, you know, OpenStack, Obviously, has come so far. Uh, it has some, you know, it has some distance to go, and uh, there's a lot of great companies working on making sure that it, it ends up, you know, very robust, very feature rich, and very stable. Um, that being said, you have great companies like Rackspace. Great, you know, I, I mean, there's too many to list, um, but you know, Ra OpenStack still has a question it needs to answer for itself, and that's what is it, right? Is it APIs? Is it implementation? Can it be certified? Should it be certified? Um, so we want to help with you know we want to help with that question because you certainly certify hardware, right? You may not certify software, but you do certainly certify hardware. Um, you want to make sure your data centers don't burn down. So um, that being said, uh, yes. Absolutely. Not some other software. Not some other software. And, and OpenStack, you know, the, the, the question before OpenStack is, you know, is it implementation? Are there bits that are associated with certification? Maybe. Is, it, is, it, is OpenStack nothing more than defining the APIs? And if so, are they the OpenStack APIs or are they a combination of the, the OpenStack APIs plus the AWS compatible APIs? You know, do you use... It, are you certified? Are you, are you cross-certified if you're using Swift versus Ceph, right, or, or Gluster or, you know, whatever? Or are you, exactly. And, and, and so that's the question, right, that, the, that is before the foundation now. Right. I'm sure anybody that's on the board also has heard that all week, or maybe longer. Um, but we want to help, right? We can certainly say, well, at least from, you know, from the physical layer up to where we stop, you can be certified. So we at least allow a platform for certification, right, in, a, in, a, in an open way. Um, again, where the Dells, the HPs, the IBMs, even the people that, that sell the thing that starts with EXA could come and contribute. Um, so one of the things that open source communities always need to do is keep moving forward, right? Uh, you've seen open source projects that start up, they get a lot of momentum, and then they sort of don't do anything. The community sort of leaves because they feel like the, the traction is gone. And open source communities live in, or excuse me, open source projects live and die by their communities, right? Uh, we've seen, uh, look what happened to the, the MySQL community, you know, after the acquisition. Um, it's, uh, it's important for 
uh, for communities uh, around open source projects to continually keep asking questions, continually uh, move forward uh, to you know, uh, change the world. And that being said, going back to something that, that I said earlier about Intel, um, we've got this contribution that was given to us as opposed to the ODCA, which is a very powerful testament to, um, to this particular contribution because it's, it's really going to keep us moving forward. On the next slide, we'll get into it. But for, we'll do a, we'll do a Beagle board. For a Beagle board, what is the name of this contribution to the Open Compute Foundation? That's it. So this is, uh, this is SIFO, silicon photonics. Um, anybody know what silicon photonics is gonna do? That's true. So it, 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 it will act as an interconnect, but it acts as a 100 gig interconnect that doesn't matter what it's talking. It doesn't matter if it's doing RDMA, it doesn't matter if it's talking PCIe, it just doesn't matter. So where we are all used to racking servers that compute, servers that are storage, memcache servers, right, whatever they are, that's how we think of a typical uh, rack today, right? Um, inside of Silicon Photonics, which is a contribution by Intel, you know, we are, we're going to be, we'll just sort of bypass the emerging slide, uh, we'll get to the future, and you have what's called disaggregated I.O., uh, or the disaggregated rack, where because of the interconnect, and this is literally photons, right? This is literally like, like light um, acting as the interconnect uh, at, at much more meaningful distances than what you achieved inside of fiber, which also was limited you know, to what you could move over it. Um, we're at a place where I can go and take memory from server A and disk from server B uh, and CPU from server C, and now I'm racking capacity, right? I'm no longer racking a server with X amount of capacity. I literally just have X more capacity that I can take from anywhere, which is a very cool concept. Um, as we, and we're, we're not far from this, right? We're not far from this at all. Uh, uh, obviously with the, with the connector, which is, a, that's not Photoshop, that's a very real connector. That's Frank Frankowski on, the, on stage at the, the summit in January. Um, that interface and that cable have been um, donated to the, to the foundation so anybody can actually uh, eventually go and manufacture this connector and use it on um, standard open um, um, principles and standards. So that being said, what if you were able to take that cable, plug that cable into a port on a networking box that used a contribution already given to the Open Compute Foundation, uh, it was actually called Group Hug, which is kind of funny, um, but we have this, this uh, common slot architecture inside of open compute where today you can put any kind of mini or wimpy core uh, server right next to uh, an x86 or anything else through PCIe. So on one board you could literally have you know ARM or x86, Intel, AMD, it doesn't matter. Um, what if that same type of contribution exists in the networking world where you could literally through PCIe stick down an FPGA or stick down an ASIC, have you know maybe some some um, coprocessor, some silicon coprocessor that was able of that was able to lay down any operating system, any operating system from any switch manufacturer on open compute compliant gear. Right, that's a that's a that's a pretty powerful question. Um, so, are we good so far? We're good. Any questions? We're, all, we're actually pretty much done. I just want to kind of talk to you about the, the various projects inside of Open Compute. Um, and then I did want to give us like about five minutes for, uh, for Q&A. So, um, you know, I just want to sort of talk to you about Open Compute and the projects. Um, we have the motherboard contribution, or excuse me, the motherboard project, which has actually had tons and tons of contributions in it. We do have Rackspace that is, uh, is going to be contributing their, their motherboard. 
We've got the storage project, which uh, sort of governs not at just the, the hardware layer, but, you know, but further up from hardware, um, how storage could be deployed inside of a data center. Uh, Facebook with the Knox spec, which is that, that 2U, um, the, the 2U 21 inch, 30 drives, LSI expander board. Um, that was the first specification we've had in storage. Rackspace is also working on a, a storage box that they're going to uh, release uh, into the general public. Um, we've got uh, disaggregated I.O., right? We just sort of talked about disaggregated I.O., and uh, that was a contribution by Intel. Um, that's an interesting project. It, it, it ended up starting out as virtual I.O., ended up as disaggregated I.O., all to govern how computers talk to computers, right, and how uh, we can start thinking about our data centers as instantly upgradable depending on where we plug in new capacity, where we can pull. So there are startups. There are somebody's probably thinking of a startup in their head in this room right now about orchestrating that, right? Because we're going to need that kind of uh, ability. That's not something that people have traditionally thought about uh, inside of data centers. Yes, orchestration is important. Um, ask Rick. He, ask Rick about, go bug Rick about Denave. <laughs> Um, orchestration is important, and disaggregated, disaggregated I.O. will be there to serve that function. Um, obviously, data center design is very important. Um, if any one of these projects, uh, and, and ultimately certification is important, right? We feel that certification is probably the most important project that we run. Uh, when you talk about, and I don't know why this is, but, but brands do matter. People want to know that they're consuming something that makes sense, right? So. If I asked you guys to go deploy Cole's version of OpenStack, maybe not, probably shouldn't put that in your, your production environment, but you can trust you know, a Nebula or a Cloud Scaling or a Morph Labs or a Rackspace or a, help me out if I'm forgetting somebody, guys. Uh, you know, one of these companies that, that have spent lots and lots and lots of time to make sure that OpenStack is stable. Brands do matter. Um, and so, you know, we, we care about certification from a uh, consumption standpoint where you feel confident that you can take this technology, uh, you can deploy this, co you know, this, this hardware, you can iterate on this hardware, and you can share this hardware. So the four basic principles of open source apply here that, uh, you know, that apply in software. Um, and, and the beauty of it is today, this is all very much Apache 2-like. Uh, we use a different uh, license. Uh, it's the... It's the OWF license, but and it, and it, we only reason we chose, it's very Apache 2-like, and we only kind of use that license because it does a better job of protecting what's important in hardware land, which is, um, which is more trademark related than, uh, or excuse me, patent related than copyright uh, related, which uh, copyright's great at governing software. Uh, patents typically govern hardware, and the OWF does a better job of that. Um, so we care about certification. Um, we care about the open rack. We care about being able to solve for volcanoes or, or, or earthquakes or floods or whatever. And we want to enable anybody that has a specific problem to solve that specific problem in an open way. So we're just getting started, right? We're just beginning this journey. Um, we have a long way to go. Uh, we want anybody that cares about um, doing things out in the open where they've got a big community to draw from, and they can build, uh, you know, they can build up momentum for a specific project. We want that same sort of community that exists in the OpenStack ecosystem to exist in our ecosystem, where people are constantly asking the question, "What if?" That being said, thank you very much. We'll take five five minutes or so for for Q and A, uh, and we'll try and reclaim some of your guys' time. Yes. Great question. So the question was, who will do the certification? And we're a nonprofit, and we don't want to uh, we don't want to enable sort of competitive differentiation through situational awareness. So we actually rely on uh, we're, you've seen maybe on the Open Compute site we have a lot of engineering summits at universities. So we're we're working actually very closely with a number of companies in spinning up engineering OCP lab you know engineering efforts where. Hopefully one day we trade college credit for working in a certification lab in a college. Um, it's a it's a great idea. We're you know it's the the very beginning of this. But to to do a certification lab today 
you need to be a nonprofit, and you probably shouldn't be a manufacturer, and you probably shouldn't be a solution provider, right? So we do have this ecosystem where all of the design, all of the community-based innovation can happen, um, but we do have solution providers that, that, you know, in hardware land, you can go, in, in the manufacturing world, you can go directly from L6 all the way to L10, fully, you know, racked, uh, certified, shipped to you in containers and rack, you know, ready to, ready to be powered on. Um, but, and we do have solution providers that will, that will do that for you also that sell this stuff. And we, we, want, we want to make sure that you know, there's not this sort of um, uh, competing, you know, at, least, at least outside looking in, competitive landscape where somebody's being favored because they have a relationship with a, a manufacturer or a big company like Facebook. Any other questions? Yes. Not, not yet. In fact, it's a conversation we want to have with networking companies, right? Um, and, and if you look at, you know, there's a lot of great things happening in the network space today. You've got, uh, you know, the ONF, right, the Open Networking Foundation. You've got Open Daylight, which, you know, has a bunch of sort of uh, companies behind it run out of the Linux Foundation, run sort of in conjunction with the Linux Foundation. I think what you're seeing in the networking space is that these companies understand that manufacturing is hard. Right? It's expensive. In fact, um, Andy Bechtelsheim is on our board of directors at the Open Compute Foundation. And one of my friends at Facebook just left Facebook to go do an open compute related startup. And he sort of sat down. So he's the, he's the, he's the vice chair of the incubation committee at the project. And Andy is actually the chairman and on the board. And, when this, and Andy, for those that don't know, started Sun Microsystems and founded Arista Networks. Um, for one of these, anybody know? what SUN stands for from SUN Microsystems. There it is. Uh, Stanford University Networks. So, and Andy's advice to this person was, don't start a hardware company. Um, hardware's hard, right? If it wasn't, it'd, call, it'd be called EasyWare. Um, and I think networking companies, it, it, I, I heard just yesterday that, uh, you know, and oh, I'm gonna, I'll just say one big switch company uh, no longer has a, a fab team. Right, for silicon. They, they've got a design team that designs silicon, but no more fabrication team. Uh, and you've got companies you know, like Broadcom um, and others uh, you know, over in APAC that are working on you know, very cheap chipsets, uh, operating systems that are you know, almost as capable as what's out there today from the equivalent sort of tier one networking vendors. Um, one of the contributions that the, that the project has recently been given, in fact, it's not even been voted on, so I don't know if it's going to be a project, is this contribution called ONIE, which is Open Network Install Environment, which effectively brings all the goodness of something like iPixie over into that world, where through that FPGA or through that ASIC in a management you know, um, plane, you, can, you, could, you could potentially lay down any networking OS on top of this gear. So we want to have those conversations, right? We think, and, and we think that all of these big tier, you know, networking companies are already thinking about things above layer one, right? I mean, you've got you know, all of these SDN products. This is all well above layer one, right? So software-defined networking is not going to happen, obviously, at the physical layer. Obviously. Any other questions? Great. Thank you all very much.